This lesson is on parallel lines cut by a transversal. So let's go over some definitions. We have lines A and B that are parallel, and parallel lines run side by side and do not cross at any point. And the symbol for parallel is two vertical lines. So when we have this line A and this line B, notice they are straight and they will never cross each other. If one of them is curved in a little bit with a little slope, then they will meet at some point. But in this case, by definition, parallel means that they will never meet. Now, if we have a line T that crosses the parallel line, this is called a transversal. A transversal line creates four angles at each point of the intersection. So point of intersection is right here, meaning that it intersects line A at this point right here, intersects line B right here, and so four angles are created through, because of that intersection. So for example, I have angle one, angle two, which is this angle right here, angle three, which is this angle over here, angle four, which is this angle right here, and we come down to this grouping where line B is, and we have angle five, which is this right here, angle six, which is coming off of the transversal, and line B, and then we have angle seven, which is over here, and then we have angle eight, which is over here. By definition, vertical angles that are opposite angles of each other, they are congruent, which means that they are also equal. So for example, this right here, angle one and angle three are by definition vertical angles, so they are congruent or they are equal to each other. And same thing with angle four and angle two, by definition of vertical angles, they are equal to each other. Now the same thing will apply to the angles five and seven over here. By definition of vertical angles, they are equal to each other. And angle eight and angle six are equal to each other by definition of vertical angles. Another definition we want to go over is corresponding angles. That says that they are equal. If you cut the transversal in half and place one set of angles over the other. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this like this. And if I take all of this line B portion right here and I lay it on top of this line A right here, what's going to happen is that all of these angles will be on top of these angles right here. So it looks something like this. So they're on top of each other, so that means that angle 1 is equal to angle 5, angle 2 is equal to angle 6, angle 3 is equal to angle 7, and angle 4 is equal to angle 8. The other definition we want to go over is alternate interior angles are inside the parallel lines are equal on the opposite sides of the transversal. So inside the parallel lines, so these are your parallel lines right here, parallel lines, and the angle inside. So it looks something like this now, okay? And then we're saying is that the angles opposite of the transversal are equal to each other. So in this case, angle four and six are equal to each other, and angles three and five are equal to each other. This kind of reminds me of proportion. Remember we did proportion, we did four divided by five, and if you think of this transversal as an equal sign, and then we did three divided by six, and we said that this fraction is equal to the other fraction. And so to solve for the x, we cross multiply. So it's a similar idea, when we cross multiply, it's kind of the same idea, that four and six is equal to each other right here, and five and three, are equal to each other right there. The next definition is the alternate exterior angles and that says that this is now the opposite that the angles outside of the parallel lines so it's going to look something like this are equal on the opposite sides of the transversal. So similar idea so diagonally the 1 and 7 right here are going to be equal and 8 and 2 are going to be equal to each other. Now let's take an example. So example one, we're going to label each angle with its measure in the figure. So you're given something like this, and, and they gave us that line A 
is parallel, remember those are two lines right there, vertical lines, to line B right here, okay? And we have a transversal right here, and they called it Q in this case right here. So the first thing we want to do is go over the definition of supplementary. So supplementary says that if you have a line and there are two or more angles, they need to add up to 180. So for example, let's draw a line, and I'm going to use this as my line right here, my supplementary line right here. And so I have an angle of 60 degrees that's given right here, so that's cut up right there. So all I need to do is figure out is the other angle right here. Using the definition of supplementary, all of this right here is equal to 180 right here. Okay, so if I know that, I'm going to use the 180 minus the 60 degrees, which I already know, so this part right here is equal to 120. So we're saying that this angle right here is equal to 120 right here. Now, figuring out, we got to figure out the rest of this other pieces right here. So using the definition of vertical angles, I can say is that the opposite of 120, this angle right here, is also 120. And the opposite of 60 degrees by vertical angle is also 60 degrees right here. Okay, so I'm done with these four. Now I need to figure out is the four angles over here. So a different definition we can use is the corresponding angles that says that if I cut up my transversal line right here, cut it up in half, and if I lay my line B on top of line A, we say that we can have corresponding angles matching. So in this case, something like this, cut it up, and I put B on top of A, what's going to happen is it's going to look identical to the line A angles. So that's going to finish our problem right there. Okay, now let's go on to example two. So example two looks very similar to example one. So we want to make sure we have a supplementary line. In our case, we're going to use this bottom right here because the 105 right here is given. So that's why I didn't use this one up here because none of these angles are given, so I can't figure anything out yet. So I want to use this right here. So if this is my supplementary line, and I already know that this angle is 105, then I need to figure out is this angle on the other side right here. So let's go ahead and do 180 minus the 105, giving us 75 degrees. So this is 75 degrees. So now to complete the other two angles on this line N, we can use the vertical angles. So the opposite of the 105 and the opposite of 75 are placed right there. Now let's finish up line M angles. So using the corresponding angles, we can split the lines up on the transversal and lay basically line N on top of line M. And now it's going to look identical to that. And so we're going to get 75 on the top right here. We're going to get 75 on the vertical, 105, and vertical 105 right there. Okay. Now let's look at example three. So this looks a little different, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually extend the line T. So this is technically line T right here because it says right here line A and B are parallel. So we know for a fact that this is a straight line right here that will never meet with this line right here. So this slanted line becomes our transversal line right there. So let's extend it, something like this. And then we're going to go ahead and say which line is going to be our supplementary line. So again, 50 degrees is given right here in this angle. So I'm going to use is this line as my supplementary line right here. Because 50 degrees is given in this side right here, I can then figure out is what is this angle down here, right? Because we just need to know is the two angles add up to 180 right here. So if we have 180 minus the 50 is equal to 130, so in this case, this angle is equal to 130. So then using our vertical angles, we can then figure out is that this is 130 and this is 50 degrees. Okay, now we need to figure out are the angles in line B. So let's use other definitions. Let's change it up. I want to use is the alternate exterior angles. So going back to the definition, the alternate exterior angles said that we're using now are the angles on the outside of the parallel lines. So I already know that this is 50 and this is 130. 
And we also said that is the opposite, or we also know the definition of alternate exterior line says that the 130 is going to be the opposite of the transversal line right here. So in this case, 130 is on this place, and 50 degrees is on this side because it's the alternate from the transversal line right here. So once I have this to figure out the other two angles we can use is the alternate interior angle rules. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 130 and 50 right here. And that says it's similar to the exterior angles that it's the alternate from the transversal line right here. So if I know this is 130 and this is 50, then we're going to have is the opposites of that right there. And then last example four. So we have is C is parallel to D. So this is very similar to um, example three. We have two parallel lines and then we have this line that is a little bit slanted. So that's obviously our transversal line right there. So our first rule says to extend out our transversal line. So let's go ahead and extend it out and now place our supplementary line. So I'm going to go a little different on this one. I'm going to go ahead and use this line right here, our transversal line actually, as our supplementary line, which is fine because if I have 120, that means this angle right here is 120. So if that's 120, then I need to figure out is this angle right here, this corner right there. Okay, but still same rule of 180 minus the 120 giving us 60 degrees. So this becomes our 60 degrees. Okay, now how do we figure out the other angles? Well, we can still use our vertical angles to finish off these angles over here. So in this case, our 60 degrees is from vertical right here, and then 120 is the vertical over here. Okay, now let's go ahead and finish off the angles on line C. So in this case, I'm going to use the alternate interior angles. So here's my interior angles right here. As long as the opposite of the transversal line, I know that this is 60 degrees, so the opposite would have to be placed over here. And 120 is on this side, so, so the opposite of the transversal line will have to be over here. So we're going to have something like this. Okay, And then the two other angles that right here we have, we can finish off using the vertical angles. So it's 120 and 60 degrees. So you can see there are many definitions that we can use to solve for this. There is not just a one way to solve for it. Uh, for the most part though, we do have to extend the line T if it's not there and then use the supplementary rules and probably we'll start off with the vertical angles in most cases and then from there you can be, use is either the alternate interior angles or alternate exterior angles or the corresponding angles to finish off the other lines. So that is the lesson.